Sure. Why do you think Jordan Peterson thinks that? Because he's a bigot. That's all you got? Well, well, look. No, 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 no. I want you to make. A, I want you to make a real sure. effort. And otherwise, and also, sure, by the way, sure, by the way, sure. real quick, real quick, real quick. If you can't, or if you don't have the desire to, by the way, that's fine. Everybody has a different role to play in society. But my role, very specifically, is trying to talk to people that disagree with me and get them to agree with me a little bit more. So, okay, uh, shut the f up. If we were, so I was going to say, if um. If we're, I'm listening to you. Da, 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 da. I want. I'm trying to have a reasonable discussion here. Why, why don't you share your actual opinion and, and clarify your belief? Da, 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 da. Well, sure, I know, but I'm saying, hold on, well, no, you're gonna call go. me out. I'm gonna counter call you out. <laughs> uh oh, who joined? Hello. Uh oh. Hi. The one who is vegan. What's up? <clears throat> yeah, uh, somebody told me you were reacting to the comments I made about you being a grifter, sort of for the right wing. Yeah, I mean, I don't think I grift for the right wing. <laughs> well, I wouldn't put it that way exactly. Um, I would put it that uh, you do have left wing values, but you're willing to sort of flake on those values a little bit. So that you don't burn bridges with some uh, bigger right-wing content creators so that you can, um, you know, use their platform to sort of support your platform. What have I ever flaked on my left-wing values? Well, the best example would be Fuentes. Okay. How do I flake on my values with Fuentes? <clears throat> well, he is a Nazi. Um, he's in favor of holocausting Jews. Uh, homosexuals, transgenders. He wants to take away women's rights and have them subjugated the same way the uh, Taliban subjugate women um, in, in Afghanistan. Uh, he either wants to completely holocaust uh, anybody who isn't white or at the very least send them back to where they came from, Africa or wherever it is. Uh, and you just platformed him and made him look like this, you know, kind of fun, funny, quirky, sort of reasonable guy. And legitimized his- How did I make uh, him look funny or reasonable when every single interaction we had was us arguing with each other? That's not true. You you were having, like, uh, lunch with him and chilling and uh, laughing. For a for, lot of the streams- For a bit, your, yeah, but uh, when he came there before, the whole point was we were going to argue over 9-11 stuff, which he completely conceded to me. Um, and most of our conversations have been like pretty combative. Maybe not at every single moment of all of our conversations, but most of our conversations are pretty combative. Yeah, it's usually me just arguing with him. For very large portions of the stream, um, you guys were being friendly. Even when you were arguing, and I saw some of the 9 11 stuff. Again, um, it okay, was. Okay, so do you think, is a, it, is, if I'm friendly with somebody, is that like a betrayal of my leftist values? Like, do I have to, is it like a prescribed way that I have to treat somebody if we have like very diametrically opposed <clears throat> political opinions or? Well, look, it's uh, questionable to begin with that you'd even allow somebody like Fuentes on your platform, like knowing that the guy wants to Holocaust uh, pretty much every minority group aside from whites. Like, do you, like that's questionable at best to even have him on your platform. And then secondly, to have a like you know a debate about something like 9/11, where it is a friendly, cordial conversation, and you're like, oh well, you know, like what's the most likely scenario? Like yeah, there's all these weird, funny coincidences. Like this is kind of like a debate you'd have with like a conservative guy that you sort of meet at, at a gym when you're just you know next to each other on the treadmill. Like it, it's not a, a, a sort of debate and conversation you'd expect with somebody who is one of the worst human pieces of shit on the f planet. Okay, so because I wasn't combative enough, do you think that makes me like not a leftist or not or I'm sorry, well, not left leaning it's, or it's not that because it sounds like so far it sounds like so far none of our issues here are with you and me um dis uh, none of the issues are with me like being left leaning or a grifter or whatever. It seems like we are disagreements over platforming people. Well, like, it's not even just platforming. You literally would flat out deny that the guy's a Nazi. I didn't like using the term Nazi, but I'll call him fascist. I'll say he engaged in... F reinforcements. Um, I think he engaged in a lot of anti-Semitism. I was willing to call him a Nazi after the appearance on, um... 
after the stuff with Kanye West. But like, why is that like the one point of fixation? Like, regardless of my like reluctance to use the term Nazi, like I still debated him on every position he had. I wasn't supporting uh, uh, him on any position he had. Like I was accurately calling okay. out like every argument he was making. Like, is that? Okay, so you agree now that he is a Nazi? Um, I close enough, yeah. Post Kanye, yeah, sure. Okay, so I was right then. N no, you haven't said you're right on anything yet. No, well, the the debate we had that I I had the position that he was a Nazi. So you'd agree that I was right in that debate. He was in fact a Nazi. The, the like, like the argument way, wasn't, wasn't the argument wasn't the, whether or not he was a Nazi. The argument was has he said enough to be called a Nazi. Right. And at that point in time, I didn't believe that he had been. No. So I wouldn't have called him a Nazi then. So like retroactively, by the way, I still wouldn't call him a Nazi then. No. By the way, um, that wasn't the first time he essentially pledged allegiance to Hitler. I don't know. I don't take seriously when you say like pledge allegiance to Hitler. Like I think the conversations that I engage in are a little bit more sophisticated than that. I don't know what he says, like a lot of Mimi stupid shit on his stream, but I'm generally approaching him from uh, what are his policy positions? What does he advocate for? So the more serious talks are the ones that I took seriously, not pledge allegiance to Hitler. Uh, okay, when people are saying um, shit like Hitler was misunderstood, he wasn't really a bad guy, oh, he just wanted to get rid of some of the, um, like, you know, big financial influences that were getting rid of, that were uh, harming Germany. Uh, he didn't really want to target Jews. Oh, the Holocaust never really happened. Haha, -ha, lol. Like, oh, well, he's just kind of goofing around on stream. Like, he, the, those all sound like jokes to you. Um, like, like again, you're doing no, the if same he's, thing. If he's make, yeah, with a, okay, so the the whole issue here is like your idea of engagement is I just need to be screaming like he's a Nazi, he's a Nazi, he's a Nazi the whole time. No, uh, and like any, yeah, that's what it's, that's basically what you've said so far. No. I don't think you've said anything original. Anyway. I understand why some people like to engage with people like that, and that's fine. But the reality is, is the types of people that do that type of engagement have absolutely zero reach outside of their echo chambers. That's not what I'm going for. My goal is to have a very wide political reach. And I think I have a wider political yeah, reach than probably right. any left-leaning person in the, probably in the, in the entire internet, if not the entire You're world right my now. Point. Okay, if you want to say I'm proving your point, that's fine. But the goal isn't to compromise my views well, for money. The goal is that I want to be able to reach into further audiences to have these types of conversations. And I'm not going to get there by screeching Nazi fascist or whatever at every person. Right, I okay, so it, it just it just happens to improve your financial situation. Literally, uh, as content creators, every reach. single thing we do happens to improve my financial situation, sure. But there have also been positions I've taken that well, have dramatically almost certainly it generally is but i've also taken positions that have been dramatically detrimental to my financial situation for instance my written house takes which is a semi-conservative take or maybe super conservative take got me departnered from twitch my take on trans athletes got me banned from twitch so not every take i've given has financially benefited me really um your written house take got you departnered you know that for sure yes they sent me an okay. email from legal saying you're departnered because of this yeah Okay. Well, <clears throat> again, um, at least on the Fuentes topic, like, I I know, I know you're trying to get on as many uh, of these platforms as you can. Yeah, of course. That's my goal as right. any content creator, well, of course. Well, right. But, but again, like, we're having this discussion again where you're trying to downplay who Fuentes is. No, 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 oh, no, well, no, no. He's, it's he's not, kind of a Nazi. I, no, like, no, this is the I, thing. This is, and this is it's so boring to me. If you want to talk about particular positions that Fuentes has and why they're right or wrong, those are the, I love having those conversations. But the obsession over like, we have to call him a Nazi, I just, I super don't care. It doesn't advance any discourse. It doesn't get you anywhere. It's not persuasive to his fans. It's not persuasive. It's just boring to me. If that's what the kind of conversation you like to engage in or other people like engage in, that's fine. But I don't think you're doing anything there. You're not like, you're not getting any points. Yeah, um, right. Again, uh, I know calling him a Nazi would burn a bridge with him. Um, no, no, it wouldn't it just burn a bridge with him. It would lose you credibility with, like, up with... No. Okay. Then why, Then you try no. it. I don't know. You do what I do. I don't know. Knock yourself out. Look, um, if... I, I don't know, like, why you're trying to play this game. Like, I mean, Fuentes actively, for years, has been trying to get his fans to accept the idea that being uh, called a Nazi should be worn as like a badge of honor. That is so absolutely I, I don't know not you, true. After Charlottesville- That is absolutely true. No, after Charlottesville, that a lot of the- You're just true. wrong. I understand you feel this way, but I'll just, for, for my audience, I'll explain. After Charlottesville, a lot of people on the alt-right started running away from that label because they realized how 
and cringe it looked. And a lot of them tried to reform. That's why a lot of them wear suits. A lot of them called themselves like, uh, what is it like? What? There's names. They're, they're like all sorts of other uh, names that they use instead of fascist or Nazi or whatever because they realized how cringe that was. And even America First for right. a while was trying to get away <laughs> from that more like extremist shit. Except Kanye kind of rolled it all back, but. Right, so that's why Fuentes, even before going on Kanye, was saying on his streams that, oh, I don't really care about being called a Nazi. Like, uh, that's just fine. Like, nobody should actually be afraid of being called a Nazi. That, like, that suggests to you that he wanted to run away from that freight. There's that a the fact that they kept that? calling themselves like paleo conservatives and stuff like that, and the fact that they um, were at least pulling back a bit from like the ultra edgy Nazi shit or whatever. Like the, um, I think I even had a specific conversation about how much he thought the Jews were responsible for the world's problems, and he moved it from fifty percent to twenty percent or something, right? Um, I think that they were kind of like walking back from that extremist rhetoric because they weren't getting very far with it. It wasn't very effective for their advertising, essentially. Well, yeah, certainly. Um, I, like, I know for, like, we all know, racists have to hide. Sure, that's good. Degree. That's a good thing. That's good. But if you have to tone down your rhetoric because you're not getting any fans with it, then that's fine. It's not like you can just turn it back up. I think that's t totally A-OK. -okay. Well, again, like, if you look at the guy's streams, not, um, not his um, public appearance, well, now, lately, with his public appearances, he doesn't even care, but... Um, if you look at the guy's streams, where his fans are really the only ones watching, and some of the people who just hate watch him, um, he he regularly, for years, tries to get uh, people to be okay with the idea of being called Nazis. Uh, Nazi. When you're when you're talking exclusively about his public appearances, uh, media appearances, yeah, he tries to not use that term, but when he's mostly only really talking to his own audience and his fans he certainly tries to normalize the idea of being called a nazi okay and if you want to have those conversations then that's fine but that i'm just not that's just not the conversation I'm well well having. look 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 i i i know i i know that you don't want to be you, you don't want to be the person to call fuentes a nazi or fe fresh and fit you know rape enablers or tim pool um, a, a Nazi or a Nazi protector. I know that because you won't be able to get on their podcast. And, okay, but like, don't you um, understand that like, I could literally, like, Fuentes' audience, since we've been fighting me, accuses me of the exact same thing now. Because now I don't want to associate with them post Kanye, and he's like, oh, you're just doing this for, um, for cloud on podcasts. You understand that like, you, this argument can cut both ways if you really wanted to. Like, oh, well, I've decided to call these people nice. You think, oh, you're just trying to win favor back with left-leaning audiences. Oh, you just want people to think that you're more um, acceptable again, and you're trying to come back into mainstream opinion. Like, you, it could cut either way. <clears throat> well, no, um, it can't, because it, like, we know that it would harm you tremendously if you were to associate with uh, somebody like Fuentes. If publicly on Alex Jones, it's being reported on CNN everywhere, mainstream media, that Fuentes was promoting Nazism. Same if Tim Pool were to outright admit it and start, uh, you know, like supporting Nazism, you wouldn't go on Tim Pool's podcast and start associating with him. So no, it it would be, you know, full well it'd be disadvantageous for you to do that. So it doesn't cut both ways. Okay, do, do you know of anybody that, it, that is as left as me that has as much access to any of the audiences that I do? Well, like, again, that's not really the, the argument I'm making, Destiny. I know you have a lot of access to these, uh, these audiences. So what the should my goal be? Is, the, the, the problem is, um, I, think you're, um, I think you're legitimizing some of these political... Like, I'll give you an example here. Um, I think it was the Whatever podcast, maybe? Uh, some podcast you're on, I can't remember, but you said something to the effect, I'm paraphrasing a little, but I think this is a pretty accurate quote. Um, you said, like, um, you know, when it comes to the trans issues, I think a lot of people don't understand the right wing. They want to, you know, they're afraid that we're harming children and everything, and I can respect that. Like. They're, that that's legitimizing their belief that they actually you're legitimizing their their anti-trans position. Their real anti-trans position is that they f***ing hate trans people. I think and that I know. To, hold on. No, 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 no. Wait, wait, wait. Let, let me finish the thought, and okay. you can respond. All right.
their their real position is that they f***ing hate trans people. They hate adult trans people. They hate child trans people. Um, and they try to hide those bigoted beliefs under the guise of, oh, well, we only care about the children. One of the biggest leaders in the anti-trans movement and the conservative community, Jordan Peterson, oh, this is all about the children. I just don't want children to be exposed to needles and surgeries. I think that's wrong. If you're an adult, whatever. Who's the f***ing first uh, trans person that he publicly attacked? Um, it was, what, um, Elliot Page? She was like 38 or 39 at the time? Th this guy, like, all of them, all of them hate trans people, adults and children, doesn't matter what age, and they're trying to hide the fact that they're bigoted by saying, oh, think about the children. Um, and then you try to legitimize their anti-trans beliefs by saying, oh, well, I think we should understand the conservative position and be sympathetic to it, that they really care about the children. That's an example of you going back um, and waffling on some of your left-wing beliefs just so that you can get on these podcasts. Okay, well, the reality is, is a lot of parents are worried about their children, and that is where a lot of the anxiety around some of the trans issues, especially in school, comes from. And if you don't understand that, you lose the ability completely to talk to any of those conservative families because they're not going to take you seriously if you don't treat their problems seriously. Well, here's the problem. Um, they're f***ing liars. They're not. So hold on. You have hold on. People, hold on. Hold on. No, wait, 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 no, no, wait, wait, no, 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 wait. Hold on. I gotta say, I gotta do that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do that. They lie a, about. Um, they that's lie great. About that you think that. Children. I'm gonna do this as a parent. Okay. I would be uncomfortable if my children was hanging out. If my child was hanging out in some of these online trans spaces, I would try to pull him out. I would probably be uncomfortable at this point if I went into one of his classrooms and his teacher had like pronouns written on the board. That would make me question things. And I'm far more progressive than most of the country, so I can totally understand conservatives feeling a certain type of way about it. I don't think we just write everything off and say like, oh, now this is bullshit. Even if you're right, even if it is that a lot of the beliefs are a bit unhinged, they say things like, oh, like when Walt, when Matt Walsh was like, oh yeah, like thousands of fuck, or no, he said millions of kids are on puberty blockers. Uh, even if a lot of the beliefs are not rooted in reality, the fear can still be real, just like how That's a lot of I'm people- Okay, tell me, go ahead. Yeah, so um, you have, uh, again, these conservative pundits, uh, practically all of them, even like uh, e even in in Congress, like Marjorie Taylor Greene, you have governors, uh, you have you know these online conservative pundits like Matt Walsh. Um, they are lying about trans kids. Not only are they overinflating the numbers, like especially Matt Walsh. Oh, it's millions, but they're actually lying about what um, constitutes gender affirming care. Um, they've been saying that kids are getting their genitals mutilated. A and this is a myth that's being spread deliberately to attack transgenderism as a whole. And again, they're using this think about the children thing as a, as a guise to kind of I insert this um, anti-trans agenda. Uh, it it's, not a, it's not think about the children. It's what bullshit can we make up to make people fear transgenderism so they can hate transgender uh, transgenderism, transgender ideology and gender affirming care like we do oh I know, let's tell them that they're mutilating kids genitals that'll freak the fuck out of people and it, it certainly does and I think that would be a legitimate fear if it was actually happening but these people are deliberately spreading fucking lies to hurt the trans movement as a whole L like again I can understand you or a conservative being worried about your child going on to some trans spaces on like Reddit or 4chan or Twitter or whatever. Sure, they can be influenced in a way that you might not think is really appropriate. Um, as far as pronouns on a classroom board, I don't know about that. Maybe it depends on the context. Um, I, I, I can sympathize with the idea that you wouldn't want to push a kid in a certain direction. Um, and you'd want them to kind of come to these conclusions themselves and not be influenced by like some sort of social group. But when you have so many of these conservatives saying they're mutilating kids' genitals when that's totally fucking made up bullshit and they know it, you have people like Matt Walsh saying, and by the way, like it's not just Matt Walsh. Um, it's like fucking everybody. Um, all of these conservatives are massively inflating the numbers on what kids are getting gender affirming care. Uh, and by gendering affir affirming care, I mean like surgeries or hormone treatment. 
Um, they're massively inflating the numbers, and it's not because they have any kind of legitimate concerns about gender-affirming care for children or adults. It's because they hate fucking trans people, and they want to spread this bullshit so that other people uh, fear and hate transgenderism just like they do. Okay, why do you think the average conservative voter is scared then? Because they hate trans people. You just, Wait, if they hate trans people, then why do conservative pundits have to <clears throat> lie about them? Shouldn't they just be able to tell them the truth and they'll hate them anyway? The, well, the fact that you're saying conservative pundits have to lie about them seems to imply that there's not this natural built-in hatred. It seems to imply that they probably don't naturally hate them and some pundits might push them in that direction. That is an absolutely ridiculous statement. <sighs> okay. Do, do, you, do you think, um, like, I think we can um, accept that chances are in Nazi Germany, well, even pre-Nazi Germany, mm -hmm. there were some pretty strong anti-Semitic sentiments, correct? Pretty sure there were strong anti-Semitic sentiments literally all across the world, especially right. Europe, yeah. So, right, so why would the Nazi party have to lie about the Jews trying to take over the world and steal money from everybody? They wouldn't have to do that if it wasn't actually true, right? Like, this, this this argument doesn't make any sense, Destiny. Um, okay. Um, so the average conservative just, why do you think they hate trans people? I'm curious. Well, like, we, we can, we can look at history. Like, how long has it been? How many conservatives have hated gay people? How many conservatives have hated black people? Mm -hmm. Women. Th that's just kind of what the group does. Uh, like, maybe, like, I don't know, maybe you should get a psychoanalyst and ask some of these people. Mm -hmm. There's a whole, there's a whole lot of reasons why a certain give political like class... Give me, like, one. Give me one. I don't know, one. I'm just curious. Why, why do they hate them so much? Why do they hate trans people? Uh, or black people or women. Their... Yeah, I hate all of them. Apparently, I hate everybody, so I'm just curious why you think so. Uh, well, look, it, it could have something to do with their religious beliefs. Mm -hmm. It could have something to do with just how somebody who's geared t with conservative thinking might feel about things that they're not used to or are different. Could be a lack of socialization. People are trying, like, like, uh, like, why would anybody hate Jews? I, I mean, there's no real, like, way to rationalize this. It's pretty f obvious they just hate trans people. A lot of them also hate black people. A lot of them also hate gay people. A lot of them also hate women. Like, I, I don't know what you want me to say here. Well, my goal for my political project is to be an effective communicator, I can understand why people feel the way they do, and then communicate across those boundaries, rather than just writing everybody off as being evil and hateful and blah, blah, blah. That doesn't get me very far it, with anybody, so. Uh, okay, so if we were, say, in Nazi Germany at the time, would, you, like, how would you go about trying to understand why the Nazis hate Jews? W would you go about it the same way that you're trying to understand how, like, why conservatives have a problem with trans people? Maybe they don't hate trans people. Maybe, like, you know, they, they just don't understand them. Maybe the Nazis didn't really hate Jews. They just didn't really understand Jews. Uh, like, there, there's sometimes no rationalizing why somebody has a problem with a certain group or why they hate a certain group. There's probably always going to be a rationalization. Swaths, there's there's literally or, always going to be a rationalization. Look, right? when, when you have large swaths of a political party making up absolute f***ing lies, and you have conservative pundits like Matt Walsh saying, I want to eliminate transgender ideology from the entire planet. People like Dylan Mulvaney are sick, disgusting creatures. He called Dylan Mulvaney a sick, disgusting creature because she was transitioning. Like, w when you have large swaths of a political party saying this, like, there isn't any rationalizing or there isn't much rationalizing why they hate the particular group. They just do. It may have something to do with them not socializing well. Might have something to all do with all those things you're talking about. Not socialize. That's all. Those are rationalizations. That's like figuring out why people well, feel the way well, they do. Well, look. Right? Well, look, the way you're talking about rationalizing this mm -hmm. is, oh, well, maybe there's some problem within the trans community that they have an issue with, or a potential problem with how they're harming another group. I don't think, um, do you think I think that trans people are harming groups of people? Have I ever said anything that, remotely That's like, what you are suggesting. No, I don't think I've ever suggested that. Is, that. What I've said okay, is, look, yeah. Okay, look, well, vegan games, I have a question for you. Sure. Do you think that, if, do you think that if someone has a genuine true belief 
that like God is real and like the scripture is like the divine word for hold on wait 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 wait, wait. real quick Zana I think the sample rate on your yeah. microphone is wrong it's okay let like, me fix that one second hold yeah, on yeah 48 to 44 one or 44 one to 48 whatever you have to do yeah yeah <clears throat> So look, um, when I'm talking about, like when you're talking about trying to understand um, somebody's, uh, you know, political position, y y like it it's clearly, you're clearly referring to a context in which y you can identify some sort of legitimate problem that they have with like no, another No, hold group. on, not legitimate problem. Is, yes, this is sounds is better. Is my microphone better? Oh, okay, no, wait, cool. no, it's not. Why is it crackly no. so much? I think it might be Discord. I, I was using something else earlier. I'll be right back one second. Okay. Just because somebody's people have people's feelings aren't Ooh. random. People feel ways for a reason, and it's good to identify why they feel that way, and then that's the problem that you attack. Um. Okay. Okay. Wait. So, when you have Jordan Peterson, pub like go uh, like publicly stating on Twitter, um, like. Elliot Page is a sick, manipulative, uh, narcissist psychopath because she publicly announces her transitioning. Mm -hmm. Or Matt Walsh saying Dylan Mulvaney. Let's is do a one at a time. Why do you creature. think? Why do you think Jordan Peterson thinks that? Because he's a bigot. That's all you got. W well, well, look. No, 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 no. I want you to make. A, I want you to make a real sure. effort. And otherwise, and also, sure, by the way, sure, by the way, sure. real quick, real quick, real quick. If you can't, or if you don't have the desire to, by the way, that's fine. Everybody has a different role to play in society. But my role, very specifically, is trying to talk to people that disagree with me and get them to agree with me a little bit more. So this well, is the, well, what sorry. I have to do. Yeah. So tell me, well, well, tell me, why do you think Jordan Peterson believes that? Without saying he's a bigot, there's got to be a, a real. You gotta have a better oh, okay, answer. Okay, sure. That. Okay, sure. He grew up in the Midwest. He came from a Christian religious background, and he just has a huge problem with anything that's uh, progressive. Okay, here. Let me try again. Let me try again. Sex, what would he say? Family values. What would gender. he? What would he say? What would he say? His reasoning is yes. For for okay. Well, again, he'd say, "Oh, think of the children." That's being his whole speech. Yeah, oh, but like, what well, about the children? Um, she's influencing kids. Okay, close, she's influencing you're closer. kids to become trans. Like, he would say they're influencing kids to become trans, but again, okay. you're the one going on these conservative spaces, trying to legitimize this conservative position that I don't oh, legitimize. They just want to protect kids. No, hold on. I'm not legitimizing the policy position. I'm legitimizing the feeling that they have. They do want to protect kids. Most well, people want to. No, they're lying. Okay. Most people don't want to protect their kids. Do you think? Do you think Matt Walsh wants to, pr to protect kids when he's claiming millions of children are uh, getting uh, puberty blockers and hormone treatment, and has even lied about kids getting bottom surgery? It's you harder. Think he's trying to protect it's kids? harder to know for the pundits, but I'm not trying to debate the pundits. I'm trying to capture their audience. So it's harder to know for him. I'm not entirely well, sure. Well, their audience would largely believe what he's saying, wouldn't you? Sure, but the audience might his... believe what they're saying. I could tell a lie to my audience to profit off of it, but my audience could legitimately believe the lie. You see, there's two different things well, happening exactly. there. exactly. That's why you attack the lie. Sh sure, but I v still... Vegan I Gaines. Oh, go ahead. I, I have, is my mic better? I have a question yes. for you. If someone has a genuine, true belief that the scripture is the divine holy word of god and that will give you eternal salvation and it is a genuine true belief do you not think that when they act in a direction of like you know being against you know lgbt stuff or whatever do you not think that they can actually be doing that from a place of love because what i've found in my experience it's not to necessarily humanize those people or necessarily like justify their position because i clearly don't support that or believe in that um but I've been around enough religious people in my life to understand that someone can be against that in a way where from their own internal belief system, which is a genuine are you belief looking to, to them, um, they are doing it from love. Like if you think that, like for example, no. your child, you don't yeah, I, I understand finish the, first. I, I didn't I even finish. Oh yeah, okay. Well, I understand what you're saying. You don't need to get, do go on. I'd say no. And I can give you a reason for why. Go for it. So there's some actually pretty good research about this. People do not um, take, people do not develop their moral beliefs through uh, whatever religious scripture they believe in. Um, what they do is 
they develop their own sense of moral beliefs and they use scripture to justify those beliefs or to back those beliefs or support their beliefs. So when you have somebody saying, well, the Bible says that, I don't know, transgenderism or homosexuality is bad. That's why I'm against transgenderism or homosexuality. I'm just trying to help you. This is out of love. They're not getting those ideas right. from the Bible. They've as they've developed those ideas. Well, what, what Hold on, wait, wait. He, also, just what, I just what, I want to say this really quickly. There is no research that says that you're dead no. wrong. No, but go ahead. If no, you want to link a study what, later, no. prove that you can. I'm sure that there are people develop strong moral intuitions, and they can probably use religion to justify some of those ad hoc. Mm -hmm. However, there are absolutely unique positions that you can inherit from a religion if you don't have firsthand experience with it. And there are even ways that religion can change your engagement mm -hmm. with it. For instance, women have very unhealthy engagement with sex, not because they've decided. They want to hate their bodies and hate masturbating, but because they learn a lot of negative stuff uh, from a, from a religious scripture or from a religious environment. So whatever you just said there, if you have a study to, to, to support that position, you don't. But I'm just there. You're dead wrong on that. But. <clears throat> yeah. So you can adopt. So it, it is possible Vegan to games, adopt how do you, new beliefs. How do you define? How do you define hate exactly? The way that you're using it. it do you think hatred is a feeling? Do you think it is more of an interaction? Do you think it is more an um, an ascertain or like a sort of reduction of another person's autonomy. How do you define hate in this context? I I, I don't think we really need to go down this route. I think, I think we, we absolutely and, have to because I feel no. Like I, I think we all agree. If a person, hold on, on. You're talking I think about. We all if, agree let me talk. What let me talk. I was. I didn't finish. Okay, that's pretty rude. You've been talking for a little bit. Okay, so I think it does matter because what you're saying is, if it is possible to do actions which are harmful towards LGBT community while also not actively having hatred. And I'm saying I think it is, and that's a really frustrating thing because it makes it a really hard situation to, to figure out and fix as a society, of course. But you're making the claim that they can't be against that in a place that is not from hatred. And so it is on you to define what hatred is because you're sort of invoking hatred as the categorical sort okay. of pillar of that. So I'm going to need you to find that in order for you to continue. Uh, okay, we're, we're talking about something completely different then. Um, well, I mean, I asked you, I oh, asked it, you this, it is, so, so we're talking about it is what I possible. asked you, because that's Sorry. what I asked you. Well, wait, wait, I, I would agree that it is possible okay. to say, commit harm against a group while mm -hmm. intending to help them. That is possible. But when we're talking about like conservative pundits or no, just... No, I, I wasn't talking about conservative pundits. You were talking about the majority of conservatives. Well, right. Conservative you know, and pundits like My brother or, is a conservative. My father. Well, you just cut me off before I finished fucking talking. So okay. like if, if I say a word and the... Well, that's not what... Okay, that's so... That's not what I did. I was really calm. You no, no. You, you cut me off before I finished the fucking sentence. So well, if ahead. you could I'm, just I'm let me finish a goddamn off. sentence before... So, no, I would love if to hear we're, what you have to say. So, okay, uh, shut the f*** up. If, if we were, so I was going to say, if, um, if we're, I, I do agree that it's possible for somebody to harm someone else while intending to help them. But when we're talking about either conservative pundits or, um, say the conservative or Republican party in general, which has an issue with trans people, yes, largely for the most part, their issues with trans people come from just a hatred of trans people. If you look at the rhetoric that spread, like the lies about how, how many trans kids are even getting any kind of gender affirming care, particularly hormone treatment or puberty blockers, um, especially when it comes to surgeries, this is um, like a widely, uh, you know, this mm -hmm. is a wide belief among conservatives that children are getting bottom surgery. When they're absolutely not. Oh, I'm, I'm aware. Nobody, I'm aware of the propaganda, and I'm aware that nobody, the pundits and how they're using hatred to nobody, spread that message. Nobody you said the majority of conservatives feel that way, and I think the majority of conservatives are against it. But I don't necessarily think a majority of conservatives are against it from a place of hatred. That's what you know. I'm nobody. Nobody would be in support of kids towards. getting bottom surgery. My fucking point is the people who are spreading this fucking lie hey, you are don't doing have to be it so rude knowingly. To me, okay. You don't have to be so rude to me, okay? You're you're expressing any, quite a bit of any hatred towards me right now. Any reasonable person would think kids getting bottom surgery is wrong. My point that I was making is that these conservatives are deliberately spreading this lie to harm the trans community. I agree. It's bad. So what what point were you trying to make? Well, I was specifically 
coming in to talk about how you claim a majority of conservatives hate, uh, you know, necessarily, or actually, my main point was you said it can only come from a place of hatred. That's actually why I hopped in here, because I felt like that was just the sort of category error. You can't really, doesn't really work that way. And you, you already so, sorry, conceded say on that, that point that, so, sorry, yeah, what, so what was the... You were the... originally saying that there's no way that you could be against that or the... Um, the way that the conservative party's moving, there's no way that someone participating in that, whether they're a voter or whatever, could not hate trans people, let's say. And I was just saying, I disagree with that. That's what you were saying, right? That's why I hopped in here. What was I the normally don't hop specific in here claim I some made? some outrageous claim. Um, it was along the lines of saying, you don't, th you couldn't, uh, you believed that a individual could not be against uh, LGBT stuff without it coming from a place of hatred. I literally yeah, it, just said it, that three times. That's what you claimed earlier. Yeah. And then so, now you just said the opposite of that. And then you said, but does it no. really matter because it's still just hatred? And I said, no. Well, I guess no. it kind of doesn't because we want to work against hatred. No. Right? That's the goal. No, I think no, part of no, no, no. Is you're mixing up what I said. No, you're mixing okay. up what I said. It's entirely possible for somebody to harm a group while trying to help them. Um, there could be some conservatives who think homosexuality... Okay, I, I guess I'm out mm -hmm. of here. Okay, each... Alright, take care, to you? dude. Uh-huh, f***. Go eat shit. Why are you trolling him so hard? I wasn't trolling. I was being honest about all that. Well, no, but like, we can hear your piano in the background. Oh, th that's coming through? Oh, because I switched the stuff over. Yeah. Oh, whoopsie, my bad. Rip. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, way to go. Well, uh, yeah, sorry about that. Sorry to uh, intrude there. I'll, I'll be heading on my way. Have a great rest of your evening. <laughs> be careful, okay? <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> you get so mad, dude. Jesus Christ! <laughs> you get so mad, dude. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Just enjoying the music, so I just want to join in and say that. Thanks, I really appreciate yeah, yeah, that. Yeah, I'm doing, uh, I'm doing some Edge Lord. How's your night going? I'm playing Diablo, and I was just listening Ooh. to this music, and it's making this dungeon more bearable. What well, level are you? Are you playing Diablo Four? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Level forty-seven with the capstones. Correct. Uh, end game shit. Did you play Diablo Two? Sure did. How would you compare Diablo Four to it? Honestly, it feels like so long goes hard. <laughs> I'm not even going to pretend, uh, but I'm, it's a very enjoyable gaming experience, which in my 30s, I don't get enough of. So. I like cried and was like super let down by Diablo 3, so, you know, or yeah, Diablo 3. Yeah, me and Destiny hashed this one out, our disappointments. I wasn't even that disappointed because I didn't really care that much, but for people that cared, they were really disappointed. <laughs> Did you not play it on release? I think you told me you did. I did, but I'm not like a huge Diablo fan, so I like didn't care. But for people that were really invested in the game, they were really mad. What's the last game that disappointed you? Um, I'm just I'm used to disappointment in the gaming world, so. Mm -hmm. Cyberpunk, maybe. <laughs> you were disappointed by Cyberpunk? 
on release think, uh, it was glitchy and blah i don't know yeah, I don't what was that wait, space wait. one called the one where you like uh, um i had like infinite planets but it didn't actually and like didn't actually have co-op oh uh, was, was it like, no man's sky or whatever yeah no that man's. one disappointed me for sure yeah that one um i actually had a really good experience with cyberpunk off the top i didn't have any issues or anything like that obviously some of the promises they made didn't come through but my experience with the game was actually good wow oh this is, uh, goes way back, but, um, god damn it. Metal Gear Solid 5. Oof. Is that the one in the desert? Oh, yeah. That one was a, that was a hard one. I didn't play that one. I think after Snake Eater, I realized I was done. Good time to quit. <laughs> that was the one. I think the, the magic had worn off by then. Oh. Vegan Games clip after he left the call. I didn't mean to. I didn't mean to bully that. I hope I didn't bully that person. I just felt like I had a right. fairly <laughs> straightforward <laughs> argument. You know what I mean? I don't feel. I, I'm listening to you. Da, 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 da. I want. I'm trying to have a reasonable discussion here. Why, why don't you share your actual opinion and, and clarify your belief? Da, 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 da. Yeah, I usually just play piano when I talk, like, even, like, the people that I work with and stuff, like, I just, like, play piano on, like, business calls and stuff, just because it's kind of, like, my, like, I don't know, I think I can, like, think and, like, communicate better if I'm, like, playing usually, or at least producing, like, sound. Yeah. I think if people don't know you're doing that or why, it actually sounds super belittling. Because mm -hmm. if I was having a difficult conversation with you and you just started playing music, it's almost like someone going la 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 in the middle of me talking. I'm like, yeah, no, no, I can hear exactly what you're saying, and I can like communicate. Like, in fact, the more I communicate while I play, the faster and more accurate I can play. I actually just can't play fast when I'm not stimulated, because when I'm not stimulated, then I, I can't play very fast. So, the more stimulated I get, the faster I can play. That's why, like, I usually have like. Uh, like two or two streams going on and I'm not really listening to them and they're creating cacophony and then I'll sometimes even play music in the background and then I'll like work on like really detailed intonation stuff because the more stuff I can ignore the more I can like focus yeah I know you're a music nerd but do you like actually produce me make music can I plug my stuff is that okay yeah go for it I don't care yeah so um for a Does long it sound time like I anime playing. music or some shit I feel like I've heard this in a persona game yeah, so for a long time I wasn't really focusing on my music because my other like YouTube stuff was like doing uh, was kind of taking my focus. But yeah, um, I release music. I have a YouTube channel for music, and I just made a music Patreon. So if you want to join my music community or support the work that I do, uh, you can check it out on Patreon.com/ziana. Exactly what you see on the screen in the top left corner. Basically, I do a lot of stuff with like microtonal harmony and really just music philosophy and harmony, intonation, musicology, and all sorts of things. And I'm always just teaching composition. So I create a space to where I can teach music and just share my music and stuff. So, and then my YouTube channel. And I've done some, if you've ever played the video game Scrap Mechanic, I did the soundtrack for that game. So that was a game that I did. Uh, did you ever play that game? Nah, nah, nah. I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not like a music nerd in that sense. So like when people talk about music theory, I don't be giving shit like that. But whatever you're playing right now, sound good. So well, that's, that's what definitely the thing for me. Yeah, I mean, I just like play from the soul, you know. But I just know, for me, like theory is more of like it's an it's an external language. But the important thing is the internal experience of it. So if you don't hear it, you don't move with it, you don't vibe with it and groove on it, it doesn't really mean anything, you know. There's no point in having a map if you are never going to go to the territory, I guess, you know? Huh? I'm telling you, man, I feel like I'm in a Japanese RPG walking into an internet cafe to talk to an NPC right now. <laughs> yeah, so if anyone out there wants to learn how to be better at music, unironically, I've taught uh, lots and lots of people, and it's what I've done my whole life. And then I started teaching people how to, you know, feminize their voice. And I kind how of to feminize? Yeah, because you know I'm male and everything, right? So. Don't 
Have you uh, ever thought of doing a collaboration with Destiny? I feel like DGD uh, would buy the music. Account. I would love to. Actually, you know, I made a comment to Destiny just the other day, I think in chat. Uh, next time he comes to LA, he should come over. We should do a, a studio stream. We can we can produce a single or something like that on stream. That'd be fun. Yeah. Destiny, would you do that? If, if DDG said they would be interested in something like that? Um, yeah, I'll be in LA at the end of this month, so I might, because I think I've got some free days towards the end. I'm definitely gone. It'll be a fun stream. I just got a producer as well that I've been working with who's been helping me like set video stuff up and shit, so mm -hmm. we could pretty much just have it all set up to just, you know, go. We could probably do some like multi camera angle shit too. Yeah, Destiny, if you had to be like a hyper music critic, let's say you're Simon Cowell on, on, on The Voice or whatever fucking show you did, and you heard her playing, what would you do? Is she getting the green light or are you buzzing, you buzzing her out? Um, Jesus, I don't know, yeah. dude. Why would you put me on the spot? Like, I, obviously, I had green lighters. The best stuff I've ever heard in my entire life. Wait, why would you ask me, why would you ask me that question? <laughs> what do you mean? I think it's perfectly fine. I think as someone who takes music seriously, would you be deeply upset if Destiny said he wouldn't give you a green light? No. It's, well, right now oh. she's just like, right now no, she's playing like no. random stuff. If she was doing like a prepared yeah. piece, I imagine also if she's going on a talent show, you're probably going to be yeah. using like the microtonal board and shit, right? And you're going to compose like a piece that is outside of the um, tonal vocabulary that most people are used to. And then, yeah, you probably, probably get okay on yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Well, I just kind of vibe, you know, whatever I'm playing. I don't know. If I were to go into a talent show and I would actually try to like do something like a, like a pop thing, I, no, I would probably do like a, a really like accessible like soul version of like a modern pop tune, you know? I'd probably do something like that. I'd probably keep it in 12 too, if I actually wanted to win like the competition. Oh, you think so? Just cause it's, yeah, just cause you want to keep it accessible. Yeah, you know? I feel like the only problem though is that if you rely on accessibility instead of gimmick, um, True. not to- well, that's uh, not I don't use my, I don't use tonality as a gimmick. So no, no, well, when I, you know what I mean? When I say gimmick, I mean like something that yeah, people like aren't used factor. to. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Yeah, I got you, I got you. The yeah. shock value would be really good, but if you're gonna go for conventional, you're gonna be up against like every single like super conventional singer. And then like the talent pool is way deeper and, and way more yeah. difficult. Whereas De if you do something kind Definitely of gimmicky, with that. you're gonna be yeah, the only person that. that, yeah. In your sort of talent, yeah, totally. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. You guys yeah, realize? No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be offended at all. It'd be cool. I don't even know what we'd produce. Maybe like, it'd be funny. Like, if maybe chat voted if we did like a hyper pop tune versus like a jazz thing versus like, I don't know. We chat could figure out some like vote for a style or something, and we can just go off on it. I'm telling you, man. Chat are a bunch of fucking persona nerds. They would like that. Kind of thing. That'd be cool. Actually, I know the. Um, um, actually, I know the, um, a person who did a lot of the, who did an awesome jazz cover of the Persona soundtrack. You should check that out. Pat Bartley. Actually, he was someone who critiqued uh, Destiny when he made his jazz claim back in uh, January. But Based. he's a great sax player. Shout out to him. Sometimes I'll be watching Destiny well, and like he'll remind me how hateable he is, thanks. and then all of a sudden he'll play music, and then I'm like, oh, he's a real person again. I don't know what it is. <laughs> But it's just yeah. it's actually interesting how you can like detect somebody and then you just hear them do something artistic for it. Like, oh yeah, this is like a multifaceted. I think I brought that up before. Like a lot of the red pill shows I go on, it's one of the things that triggers me is when they talk about like getting girls ultra masculine, ultra masculine, and it's like if you can get like an instrument in front of somebody, that's like a surefire way for to get somebody to like you. Uh, and then also like liking their animals and kids and shit is like a surefire way to get. It's always funny that like those are like the go tos. Um, not to say that being masculine doesn't work, but those are like highly, highly, highly effective. But they're probably seen as more feminine than anything else. You said they're seen as more feminine than anything else? Yeah, when you think of like a guy like playing piano or something over like, you know, like lifting weights or something, I think that red pillars would be, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, those people are so like deluded when it comes to reality. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> that plays music like, yo, you know how many fucking band members you be getting all the pussy like, bro? Shut up. Yeah, exactly, yeah. It was actually so disgusting as a dancer seeing how much pussy people who did music would get. Like, not every kind of music, obviously. Mm -hmm. But, like, I remember dudes that, like, just cover bands. They'd go to, like, concerts, they'd do like, these little shows at dingy bars, and they'd be, like, cleaning up. I'm like, bro, this dude is not even, like, an FT or anything, like, in terms of skill level. Sure. And he cleaning up. So, whenever I see dudes be like, oh, this shit's gay, I'm like, all right. All right. <laughs> yeah. I feel like music is like one of the oldest things that humans have and it's one of the most incredible experiences that we can all share with so I don't know I think everyone should be musical and I think everyone should 
play music or try to express music. I think we all express music, but um, just in contained ways that we're like typically allowed to express. No, I mean like speech is kind of an expression of music in a way, but in a, in a contained way that we're comfortable. Because once you like learn how to do it, you know, music, like I'm not like thinking about anything I'm playing or whatever, I'm just kind of moving my hands around and stuff. So, and I think it's the same when we talk, right? It just becomes sort of a, a passive auditory action and music's kind of like that, so. I find um, earlier you were talking about like doing the organization for the talent show or whatever. I noticed this by going to a couple like improv sessions when it comes to music. I noticed there's some guys or some uh, women who when they perform, they sound really good when they're improv but every time they got to choose a set of chords or they got to make a selection for a song, everything just sounds so dog shit once it's like actually pre-prepared. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's because uh, they don't. I'm, it's not, actually... I'm, not good at, I'm not good at performing live. I'm good at improvising. I'm good at composing, hearing and arranging. And I, I, I can learn stuff, but I've never been a person that can focus to learn other people's music. Shit's just like boring as fuck, honestly. I guarantee you, Abba, I bet it works this way in the comedy world. There's gotta be some comedians that are, they have like the funniest fucking um, sets ever. Not work? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but when it comes to like, actually just kind of like being really funny in real life, like it's just not the same thing. Um, when it comes to music, pr preparation of music and improv are two totally different things. Like if you put me in a room with a bunch of normal people and I, I'm allowed to just like mess around on the piano, I can probably convince most people that I'm like pretty good at piano. But if you get me to like prepare pieces, it's gonna be like, oh, this guy's like a third grader. Um, they're two yeah. totally different. And also I've known friends that are, and I'm sure, um, Zena, I don't know how to actually pronounce her name, Ziana, whatever the fuck. Um, you probably know. Amelia. Sure. Me that. You probably it's know like people that are season. really, really, really good classically trained pianists that yeah. like couldn't play like a grade 12, like a high school fucking level like jazz band piece because um, they can't hey, like syncopate, the you know? That was the argument I made to you in January and you were trying to deny it. That exact argument. Sorry to call you out on that, but about how the, even the great classical <laughs> pianists couldn't just learn the syncopation or the swing or the jazz, right? It's got to gotta be heard so just well, gotta call you out on that for, one yeah firstly no that wasn't the argument i was making they have the capability to learn it because i know because there are pianists like keith jarrett for instance yeah, that do yeah, classical well, and jazz he's, he's really well I, mean, sure, I know but i'm saying hold on well, no, no, you're gonna call go. me out i'm gonna counter call you out there are pianists that <laughs> right. can do classical but 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 all i'm saying all i'm saying yeah i know all i'm saying is that they're two very very different sets of skills and if you don't practice one you can't just pick it up from the other it's just like in the gym like where there's like divergent specialization you know, it's hard to be like elite, top of the top of the world, specialized in multiple different domains at the same time because you sort of get specialized over time at one. So I think like um, with the Keith Jarrett thing, I think you know he he obviously got started classical and then he moved into jazz. So I think it's more, it's less like you can special it's less like you can hybrid specialize and become the world's greatest at two things and more like to become the world's greatest at one thing you have to allow that specialization to weaken in others but then look around those boundaries to gain, to gain strength in other domains and stuff but yeah i agree with you that's a good point mm -hmm. but keith jared's the goat he's crazy do you have a favorite chord um what did you say what did she say did she have a favorite what favorite chord, chord? <laughs> there you go. Wait, what did you hear? I, was, I, heard, I thought out of nowhere, she's like, do you have a favorite porn? I was like, whoa, oh, that's no. wild. What? That's weird. I would have wanted to know what the answer was, too, because I'm like, who has a favorite porn? But I'm scared. Wait, you don't, you've never had a favorite porn? I've never had a favorite porn. Every, everything gets rotated. I, I think if you watch the same porn for too long, that's really weird. Interesting. I feel like porn is meant to be rotated, is it not? Maybe. Is I feel like there are- watches the same fucking DVD forever? I feel like there are some times where, um, no, I cast the wrong spell. Sorry. I feel like there are some times where you can find a, uh, you can find a porn and you like it a lot and you rewatch it for a few days, but yeah, they get old, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah I agree. You can definitely do a couple of days, but after a while, it's gotta go. Sure. I don't think I've ever had a porno that I could watch for more than like a couple months. Or even that's even pushing it. And then, like, you know, I might come back to it a little bit, like for a one last fling or a few more, but I just, I just I gotta go, gotta go away. Okay, that's fair. I wanna meet the man who could rewatch the same porn forever. That's great. Yeah. I didn't need to be here. So, yeah, did you have a favorite part? Uh, I like chords with lots of extensions, basically. That's, I'm a simple man. 
So your major sevens, your add elevens, like those what's things. The mo- what's the biggest extension you know? Well, I mean, I, I guess you can just start stacking chords on top of each other if you want to be <laughs> gay about it. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I just wonder. Uh, but the problem is, like, when you ask me that, like, I like I can play lots of them, but I don't, I can't voice them correctly, right? Because on piano, if you're like literally, if you're stacking thirds all the way up to like 15, it's gonna sound like shit, right? So I don't know any like the proper, because they're gonna be, you know, right? There's conventional voicings for um, well, your add nines. I'll teach you. I'll teach you something um, <clears throat> if you're open to uh, something. Just a quick advice, and this goes for everybody, and it's really a property of sound that we can't really avoid. Voicing always happens against an unrealized harmonic series in the background so let's say you play a tone anywhere in the spectrum now there is some theoretical harmonic series going on in the background it can be from that tone or you can impose that tone to be some theoretical point in a harmonic series so if i were to do that and i wanted this to be a third that's going to be the most concordant and most like that empty or clearest version. It's not that clear in, in 12, actually, because of the way 12 is tuned. But we can start to space around the overtone series. You can't get all the overtones on the piano, but this goes. This is why if you space thirds in the bass, it's muddy, because low frequency spaces down there we hear very non-linearly. And so if we have anything too narrow in that lower area, it gets too muddy. If we have anything too we can't have anything too close in the top. You can play entire clusters of notes in the top and it fuses because of the way we hear and the way the human auditory system works. And since the actual like pressure in the space and like the way, well, the most concordant arrangement of tones that can ever physically exist in this universe that we're aware of is a harmonic series or reductions mm-hmm. of that or subsets of it. So it is basically the standard, it's like the blueprint of what concordance and, and um, that doesn't mean consonants and dissonance, by the way, for anyone who's listening who's not really aware of that. Consonance and dissonance is a bit more contextual. Concordance is more about the physical like clarity and roughness of like the actual like vibration in the space. And so, um, yeah, so when we think about spacing, just so you're aware, in jazz principles, what we tend to think is where there's the D3, you basically don't ever want to put a voiceless root below there. So most like jazz piano, we 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 we, we voice rootlessly, and we pretty much don't go down there. If we do go down there, it's usually not thirds because even a minor third, C E flat, uh, C E flat B flat, gets a little muddy at that point in the frequency spectrum with that spacing. So, but yet D minor, it's quite clear to the ear. So then if I were to go to C minor, I don't really want to play it with a C and E flat. I want to keep the fourth. The texture is going to stay open. And then now I've got, I can open octaves in the bottom. (laughs) And then in the top, it doesn't even matter what you do. It doesn't even matter because of the way harmonic spacing and concordance works. So yeah, anyways, that's how. So just, um, you want to have th- ranges of fourths, thirds, and seconds in the middle of the piano. You can have anything in the top end. When you have wide structures, it makes the thing feel open. And then on the low end, unless you want rumbling effects, you should keep your spacings wide, either root and five, root octave, or root major six. Like this is a beautiful one that most people don't know. I'm actually going to use this later. Like I said, subscribe to my Patreon. I can teach you more about music than anyone you've ever met, probably. So come find out. Woohoo! You know, I'm trying to make music my life and my living because I love what I do already, but my dream is to just focus on my music entirely because I know that's what I want for my life. And so, yeah, I can teach you anything you want to know about music. So many chats that explain for us. Um, basically, the music, there's like 
there's like one or two patterns you need to learn in music and it essentially repeats like in every single space and i think the more you learn in music the more you realize like how fundamental um everything kind of goes back to so like say like the harmonic series um or like the circle of fourths or fifths and even how you voice things like in some sense it can seem very complicated a lot of what i'm saying maybe not understand but like it seems like very complicated how things are written but the reality is the way the sound works it like all kind of rolls into itself it like it's kind of weird but even though music is like the like things that sound beautiful or pretty to the ear a lot of it is like you could argue is very heavily math based um w when you dig into like the physics of uh, of all the sound or whatever it's like the simplest explanation i, I would say mm. yeah it's a pretty decent i mean it's more so um the only reason why any of these principles function the way they do is the way well for one the human ear and like auditory system has a lot of weird properties so it's really not just math based like math provides a pretty useful map but like, that's like a map, not the territory once again. So it ultimately is about sound because your ability to interact and manipulate it is an internal process. But I, I do agree with like the, the behavior. Sure, but when you talk about like, for instance, like harmonic physical. series and you talk about voicing yeah. around harmonic series, like all of this is like, like ratios of frequencies that are like pretty restrictive in terms of how they can show up. But I mean, you have yeah, a lot of freedom with it. Yeah. Generally, but there's a lot of, um, not so much like 12 note equal temperament really shows that right so music can kind of just be whatever it doesn't have to conform to any whatever and even not just that but even going off of that map you can find interesting pools of concordance that come from other types of arrangements like um like linear uh like arithmetic like frequency structure stuff and whatnot but um yeah the main thing is that basically for some reason uh, i'll spare all the details but when we produce a stable tone, like what our ears perceive as a pitch, that creates a certain pattern um, in the space around us. And that pattern actually is not just one single pitch. Like most people, when they hear that one tone, it's just one sound. Mm -hmm. But inside of that sound, there's all these other little pitches that are sounding at the same time. And those um, basically are the, the unit of like concord. And so every time we voice, we're ultimately voicing against that structure. And beautiful color comes from deviating from it and sort of obscuring it and working around it. So, yeah. Whatcha? You dance, right? You're talking to Abba, yes. Uh, That's right. Got you into that. But I don't know any theory, so if you start asking me like B minors and all these other chords, I'd be like, bro. Mm -hmm. I just be moving. Mm. I could probably get technical, like you know, for if I really tried, but I don't. I don't have the lingo. I don't have the academia either for. It. Mm -hmm. um, this is a bit more of a scientific question, but you probably still answer in layman terms. When it comes to the relationship between music and emotions, I'm curious, what do you guys read up on scientifically that kind of explains away these things? Is it just all brain waves and the way our brains react to stuff, or is there like even deeper things going on? Because I've heard of whole, so many things in relation to like mothers being pregnant and listening to certain kind of musics and different things like that. I'm just curious what you guys know if there's anything scientific behind it. Um, you want to get that, uh, Destiny? Yeah. Sure, I'm going to take a stab at it. So there are some things that are just going to be like objectively true things, and then there are going to be some things that are going to be culturally influenced things. Um, so like, for instance, certain notes... Um, do you know like when you draw like a little wave, like on a graph, it goes like up and down and up and down? And sure. then you can draw a wave that's like twice as fast, so it'll go up and down and up and down like twice as quickly, right? You could describe like the ratio between those pitches as like one to two, right? There are gonna be certain ratios of pitches that sound like nicer to the ear. So we can call those like consonant pitches. So for instance, on a keyboard like C and G, right? Like these things have, they sound like kind of nice because they don't vibrate a lot against each other. But if you do like C and like F sharp, they're like, they have a lot of like uh, dissonance with each other. They vibrate a lot against each other, right? So mm -hmm. in some sense, some music is gonna be like, those things tend to sound a certain way and consonant things tend to sound another way, right? Some things sound like nice because they don't create those unpleasant vibrations. Some things sound really bad because they do create, un um, they do create bad vibrations. Um, okay. However, there's a lot of stuff that's like cultural, like how you hear a tone can influence too. So for instance, like, that's like a really bad sound, like C and B natural, but 
arguably it can show up in ways where it's like, oh, it doesn't sound as bad. So there are some principles of sound that are, they sound away because of how the, the notes like vibrate against each other. But then in other ways, based on like the context that we hear certain songs, um, they can make us feel a certain way. Now, whether or not there's like an objective, like does all music make us feel this way? I don't know if there's a concrete answer on it. People argue this question all the time. One of the most legendary ways that these arguments show up is uh, what makes a song a Christmas song? And some people will get very hard into the theory of like certain chord progressions are this is Christmas and blah, 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 blah. And other people will say, if there's fucking sleigh bells in the song, it's gonna sound Christmassy. Um, and I don't even know if people agree on that argument 100%. So yeah, it's, yeah. Music is like a, it's a very complicated phenomenon that probably is gonna require some like compelling answer about like, what does it mean to be conscious to have like a good accounting for it? But yeah, that's as much as I think I could explain, yeah. Mm. I think in similar fashion to food, like we can't all agree on what would constitute good food, but we do see patterns and overarching things that are popular in terms of flavor palettes and things like that. Yeah. So I imagine it would probably work similar. Mm -hmm. Okay, so my thoughts on this. I think that really um, music is a tricky thing for us to pin down. And when we start to talk in philosophical discussions about it, it tends to get to this weird place where it breaks down because of the whole observer kind of paradox. Um, you know, if someone like hears silence, is that music? And someone says, I think it is. And someone says, I don't think it is, right? It falls into a really weird place. And the way I've come to understand it um, over time is that music is not actually like a, a, a material or substance. It's uh, it's a process or a state transition between something external sort of entering internal and then being reprocessed or something internal being reprocessed and going external and there's kind of three parties involved all the time which is the person making the music um, the external thing itself like the, the medium itself which is the thing that has objective form and objective um, qualities in it and then the like internal like experience of the person who perceives it so for example a lot of people can have really moving experiences just listening to noise uh, or like you know screaming stuff that other people don't find beautiful and I think um, in that case that's because like music is an internal process it's not really something that is an objective process and um, when we think like about what, what Destiny was talking about with the concordance and discordance stuff, that is objective. There is an empirical and observable, measurable behavior of how waves and signals um, combine and interact in space. And um, the issue with that argument and using that argument to derive like a appeal to aesthetic beauty is th those acoustic principles that we have, they don't really, they're not really represented in a lot of our pop music. I mean, they are in terms of how mixes are, are produced in general, but um, you know, like equal temperament alone shows that if really the key thing was this like purity of like, of intervallic structure and stuff and an appeal to like sort of a, um, that more objective concord, then we probably wouldn't have settled in where we had. I mean, if we look at any objective ideals or objective appeals to beauty, there are some trends that show up in human history. And those are notes with seven, or scales with seven notes, scales with five notes. Um, both equa, hep, uh, equa uh, heptatonic and equa pentatonic scales, which just means uh, five and seven, and then also um, just intonation and harmonic series tunings, because the human voice itself is fundamentally a harmonic series. And so when you get a bunch of people together singing in a room, they tend to start tuning harmonically, and that tends to show up uh, around pretty much all cultures in some capacity. Um, and then from there, the question is, once you have that harmonic series tuning that everyone's singing, how do you modulate? How do you get it on a physical instrument since it's a really complex structure? So I think, I don't really think there's an objective beauty or emotion to music. Um, yeah, I don't think so. I think a lot of it has to do with your environment, cultural, because your, your experience you kind of project what you want into music. So like when people hear microtonal music, if they grew up in an area that uses those kinds of microtones, those will just sound like regular sounds that are really normal. And then when someone hears something maybe that's not in 12, that can kind of sound out of tune or broken. And that, um, there's a name for that in the microtonal community. It's called like Zen harmonic or whatever. So like the more Zen it is, is the less like familiar it sounds to your ear. And that can go away. So if you spend like three weeks in like a slightly different tuning or something, and then you come back and you play a different one, it completely changes the way that it affects you. And so I think, um, yeah, I don't know about that. The problem is um, it's 
There's the internal process for music, so yeah. There's objective external, but that's very little about what makes like art compelling or engaging for people to interact with. That's a great question. I spent a long time studying and transcribing Bill Evans in my younger days. Uh, there's, you're going to want to learn to put the nine next to the minor third. There you go. And then you're going to want to play all your altered dominants as two forms. That form, which is the, the three, seven, sharp nine form. Or the, the other form. Basically, he had, he had a bunch of pinched seconds constantly in the mid-range. Also, he had these really interesting chordal minor type beats, you know, because he was the, I mean, he's the so what, uh, he's the one who played those chords. But you're going to want to get the, um, and then the altered voicing, which is that one, like I said. You're going to want the diminished, where instead of playing root, minor, third, flat, flat five, flat, or flat seven, you're just going to want to play 11, flat 5, flat 7, like that. It's weird for a diminished voicing, but with a bass it sounds like... Yo, Destiny. What's up? You ever just listen to people and realize they have, like, no idea how to market themselves? Realize you have no what? They have no idea how to market themselves? No idea how to what themselves? Market. Oh, yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. Zerk is a good example of that. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not trying to market myself. No, no, no. Yes, I am. No, I, I, I am know now, you're not. I, I know I you're am, not. No, no, no. I am now, though. For music, I am now. Only, only in the last two weeks, though. Otherwise, I've been. Wait, wait. Was this a, was this about her? <laughs> no, no. What about her? I don't think she's trying to market herself. I am now, though. In the last, in the last like two weeks, but yeah. Oh wait, what, what, what is this in reference to, or what's the inspiration for that? No, it's just sometimes I see content creators, or like I'll see people online who I think like are skilled or talented at something, and I'm just like, these people have like simple ability to like, which is nothing bad. Like they have a talent or skill, they just have no idea how to get it out to the people, mm -hmm. get it out to the, way, to the people in a way that they would find interesting. Right? Um, and so I don't know if I'm too content brained, or if I'm always like thinking about how to be efficient with things. Um, I don't even feel like I'm that talented. I just think I have better processes when it comes to like marketing whatever I want to do packaging in a way that's like suitable for people. Mm -hmm. But I think it's just true for most successful products. I think most successful products are not the most uh, quality products out there. They're just the best at getting what the consumer wants. Them. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, for sure. I didn't mean to interrupt, but I was uh, kind of wondering if I could pick the brain of the two music experts in the room. I don't want to leave you out, Abba, but uh -oh. I'm not entirely sure if you have a background in the music like this. No, no. If you guys want to talk about chords and E minors and elbow flats or whatever the fuck it is and go in no nah, man it's uh it's it's really simple stupid question <clears throat> i listen to a lot of music but it's not the usual kind of music the music i listen to has a lot of comedy in it it's not like stephen lynch or a comedy musician but it's more like weird Al yankovic bloodhound gang um lonely island stuff like that destiny ziana how do you say your name uh ziana yeah Okay, cool. Do y'all consider that like actual real music? Uh, I think if you talk to anybody that does music, then they're never gonna, they should never give you an answer where they're like, oh, this is real music and this isn't because the territory is very fraught with arguments. That, that's that's like an impossible to answer. Quite. Like theoretically, ha there's a there's a really pretentious fuck. Uh, you should, I shouldn't say that, but there's a guy called John Cage who has like a billion different experimental albums of like recording a bird in a cage for an hour and just like recording random shit and no. like tr trying to challenge like what is music. Um, 
as long as there's some intentionality and some organization, then yeah, you can probably call it music. But like people will even challenge those two parts of it. So. Yeah, I um, would say if I hear it as music, um, I will experience it as music. I've certainly been brought to tears by the sound of an air conditioner before. So <laughs> shut the fuck up. No, shut a, the I fuck a, up. I'm serious. I have like a 15 minute recording on my phone from last August. There was um, these people working on construction near my friend's house and they had these air compressors or something. And it was just blaring away super loud. And I went out at like nine in the morning and there was, really pro <laughs> there was a prominent 13th harmonic. And I almost never hear prominent 13, 13th harmonics in like acoustic sources it's extremely rare and i was just like it's really stunning so i just kind of fucking jammed out to it for a while so i don't know i'm not i, I don't i think i'm probably one of the um most um liberal people when it comes to the definition of what is music then again i do think there needs to be some intention in it but i think the listener can put intention into it which is what i said earlier about the person hearing it can, can project onto it so that's why like me hearing that can move me because that's what i'm hearing in it and so it sort of becomes and transcends into music in that state transition process inside me when i experience that um but no i do i certainly think there's objective i, th I think there's a, objective principles that tend to make a, an artist a stronger composer weaker composer or a piece more you know consumable or less but i don't think that necessarily makes it more or less music if i can consume it well, I guess I should narrow it down a little bit. If the subject matter of the song is intended to be funny, rather than expressing the artistic beauty of, of the song itself, does that make it less, I don't no. know, less acceptable no, so. as music? No, I mean, music no, can be funny, sure. right? Movies can be funny, yeah. film can be funny, like anything can be funny, paintings can be funny. Like, there's even a classical piece of, um, is it is it um mozart that's who i was trying to think of too we, it's mozart right are you like the art noise oh i wasn't thinking of that i was thinking of um is it haydn is that how you pronounce his name it's been so long hmm. um he has the the thing called the surprise symphony i'm sure you've heard this yeah um where it's like the whole symphony is like they're playing along they're quiet and there's just like one really fucking loud note and it's supposed to, i don't know if it was supposed to scare the audience or what but mm -hmm. i'm like yeah i mean like you, they're like comedy can show up on all sorts of things it doesn't make it less artistic i don't think yeah it's supposed to sound like a mistake and then like i feel um comedy is still a reaction and i feel like that kind of creates that state transition process i was talking about where like the the sound the external is consumed and it's like synthesized and processed into some like you know significant reaction so if it makes you laugh, then I think like it, it really obviously moved you. Not a lot of things that make me actually laugh. So when I hear music that does do that, it's like pretty, pretty impressive. Okay, well, uh, that was my question. <laughs> Give me something to think about. Y'all have a good night. I love you, be careful, buddy. When I was younger, I used to think um, comedy pieces or like meme pieces were like, I don't know, less, but I feel like I really, moved on from that perspective it just doesn't really make any sense i think i was just envious of people who were doing that with their music and succeeding sure i think there's also there's always like the temptation it feels good to be able to rigidly define something and then to draw borders around like what is art or what isn't art or stuff like that right mm -hmm. if you can do it it feels good to be able to do it but then i mean any position you have uh, is going to get challenged eventually and it's hard for it to stand up to all forms of criticism when you start drawing like boundaries around like what is music and what isn't and yeah and and I think because it's not really like a, well, I think when you try to define, like I, I wrote some essay on this recently, I'm, I'm gonna eventually publish, but I think like the challenge is when you try to point to it and define like a specific quality that it has or doesn't have, it kind of misses the fact, like I was saying that like, it's actually the transmission process or like the, the boundary conversion process between that external thing being reprocessed internally and synthesized and then were put back out by an artist because like the question of like is it music well um would it be music if someone couldn't hear and couldn't feel but had a piano in front of them was able to mash away at it and they were intending to create something and they knew that's what they were trying to do i personally would argue yes definitely but in that case there's nothing really feedback from the artist but there's still intention being put out into the external so there's still some conversion of that boundary transition thing and then really um yeah, 
So I don't know. I've been thinking about that a lot, just different scenarios and cases that sort of put that question of what is music to its limit. And I think the the way to define music is to define it as a dynamic um, process, uh, the conversion process, as opposed to a fixed point. Because if, if it's right on the periphery of boundaries, it's not really like in either space, and that's I think what makes it special. Uh-huh. Yeah, thanks for letting me play. It was, uh, it was fun. Um, hit me up or something if you're in LA. I'm definitely down to jam or something if you want to figure that out. And thanks for listening, Abba. Well. Yeah, yeah. I would tell you to, oh. if you want to actually make money for m- music and you don't, like, do. maybe you just want to work with like aspiring musicians or whatever. Well, no, I want to do what I want to do. That's kind of the thing. I just want to do. What do you want to do? Uh, I want to teach and pioneer the craziest music theory and music philosophy that exists, which is pretty much what I've been doing but get paid for it, which is a pretty hard task. I don't really know any music theorist that's, you know, done that, but I'm, I'm starting to get to a point where I'm getting closer to that. I'm I'm down to produce for people too, but I already have a, a, a job and some business stuff and it's, it's okay and it's pretty hard for me to put time away from that. So my music has to sort of buy back my time in a way, if that makes sense. So um, I don't know. I, I want to make more music education resources. I want to make more like... Um, entertaining stuff I started making short form content for the first time in my life I've always made like long form content like 20 minute like 30 minute 40 minute videos and stuff so I started making these one minute long piano etudes in 31 and that really helped my um, music channel out a lot I've had the most growth in the last months that I've ever had so that's kind of made me think more about sharing what I do more publicly so yeah that's why I'm here like I was like hey can I play piano you know but no, if you have any suggestions or no, 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 advice, I think I think that's what I you want to do, which I think is like not necessarily about maximizing revenue, but it's more so about more the scholarly pursuit and like the. Yeah, yeah. Well, itself. music and for think, me is a spiritual pursuit, so yeah, yeah, I'm sure. very thankful that people are, enjoy what I do. Yeah, no, no, I respect it. I respect it. I think in a lot of disciplines, uh, that kind of approach or more of a purist or you know experimental mindset is uh, great, even if it doesn't necessarily always lead to. Uh, but hey, return, I think it's but, still dope. But if you ever need a producer for some meme tracks on your channel, and you you know you want a collaborator, you want to do some work, that's uh, I'm definitely done. Or, or, or listen, if you start producing some salsa songs, you can you can holla at. Yo, what's up? <laughs> I fuck I fuck with that. But no, uh, yeah, that's right. So chat Patreon. I'll post my links. So chat, chat, chat. Mm, that's right, Highland and Tight or whatever. Mm. <laughs> I did yeah, it. If, anyone, if anyone knows any good cello teachers in LA, let me know too. I, I've been playing cello for a bit, but I really want a teacher so I can like get like better because I'm having trouble bowing. I haven't quite figured out. There's my Patreon channel. I just posted that. And like I said, that's just for my music YouTube stuff and um, just my old stuff. I'll have my discography on there and my rare tracks. I've written like 10 albums. I have like thousands of tracks that I've never released. So I'm slowly like releasing those things. In different eras of my journey and um have you ever um you, do you know who you zane is record? on twitch zane um guitar player guy He's super talented i don't i don't do you know him uh kind of yeah oof mm. that would be a fun he's also like very 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 theory oriented he's got a big yeah, brain for it talk with him i'd be i would definitely be down to chat if you want to connect him and i or whatever but um yeah have you been playing recently um, I've just been streaming. Nothing, mm. nothing that I haven't normally been doing, so. Mm. Ugh, okay. Do you know Barry Harris? Nope. You should watch some, study some Barry Harris sometime. I think that would be a, a, a useful Destiny's thing got for a you. lot of free time. Yeah, I'm all over it. <laughs> True. Fair, I see what you mean. Yeah, that's the hard thing is... When do you have time to do music? Not you, but the general you. I just kind of like, I didn't, um, I don't know. I didn't, uh, care what kind of happened to me when I was younger, so I just was like, I'm gonna do music no matter what happens to me. <laughs> and then at some point, I, I moved away from that, but. Hey, hey, listen, do you want DG to hate you? Do you think they want this guy spending all of his free time doing that? They want to see him do debate crap? They want to see him change true. his I, mind? I kind of want to see that too. Yeah, I kind of want to see that too, though. Get to it. Yeah, Get out yeah. there on the you doing all this music talk, trying to tell them to go yeah, find his fuck music. Wait, fuck music. Yeah, you should never, you should never touch your piano again. That's right. 
I'm trying to save you from being murdered by DDG, okay? So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I see, I see. True. Okay, I'm gonna hop off here. I got some other stuff I gotta do. It was lovely chatting, everyone. Have a great rest of your evening. Thanks for having me on, and uh, yeah, I'll chat soon. Yeah, be Take careful. Care. Thank you. Bye. Take care. Have a great night, Abba. Good night. Fucking Abba. Oh fuck! Did he leave? Okay, well. <laughs>